this video we will discuss the problem longest path in a matrix previously this, this problem has been asked in a lot of product based companies the problem says that we'll be given a matrix which will be of n cross m size and we have to find the length of the longest path starting from any cell inside the grid such that the path is strictly increasing and we have to consider that we can only move in four directions that is we can move in the upward direction in the downward direction in the backward direction uh, like in in the upward downward in the left uh, in the right direction and in the left direction so basically we can move in four directions so let us say that we have been given a matrix of 3 cross 3 size so let's say we have been given a matrix like this which is of the dimensions 3 cross 3 and the values in that matrix let's say are given to be as 1 2 9 and then we have been given 5 3 8 and after that we are given 4 6 and 7 so in this case we can easily observe that if we start from this cell so the next cell that we can move to is this cell because it is increasing then the next cell can be 3 then the next cell can be 6 because if the previous cell was having value 3 then the next cell is increasing then from 6 i can move to 7 then from 7 i can move to 8 then from 8 i can move to 9 so what is the total length the total length is nothing but 7 here so that is how you have to see uh, there could have been other paths here possible as well but in this case the length of the path with 7 length is the maximum possible you can see that other path that i could have taken is like from 4 i could have moved to 5 this could have been one more path so basically what i am thinking is what i can do is i can run a dfs right i can run a dfs so i can say that suppose that i start suppose from one of the cells what i do is i run a dfs call to find that what is the maximum um, what is the maximum path increasing path from that particular cell if i do this so the dfs will take n cross m time but since there are total number of total number of cells in the in the grid uh, in the grid are n cross m so if for one cell i am uh, a dfs call is taking n cross m time so for n cross m cells it will take n square into m square time so this will take a lot of time complexity but still we will implement this solution so that we can uh, try to see what are the things that we are repeating again and again so that we will optimize it but first of all let us try and write this brute force code so what i will do is i'll have int n is equal to nothing but matrix dot size so first of all i will take out the size of the matrix that is the row and then m is equal to what uh, matrix of uh, zero dot size that is i, I will take out the uh, size of the columns once i have the size of the rows and the columns so what i will say is that i will have a let's say result i'll have int result the marked as zero that will be storing the maximum length and what i will do is as i mentioned that i'll be uh, run, going through all the cells of this particular grid and i'll be running a dfs from them so that i can find out that what is the maximum uh, path what is the max what is the for each cell what is the maximum uh, maximum path uh, increasing path and whichever is the overall maximum that i will be taking so what i will say is that uh, i can basically say that i will uh, run uh, i will have a dfs call that will give me uh, let's say path sum int path sum is equal to nothing but i'll have a dfs call and in that dfs call what, uh, what i will be passing is i'll first of all pass the matrix then i'll pass the cell i then j and then n comma m and since i also want to pass the previous value right because what is happening every time i'm calling a dfs right suppose that i'm uh, suppose that i'm calling a dfs call suppose that i i call the dfs for for this cell right suppose i call the dfs in this cell next time i call the dfs in the cell 3 suppose suppose i suppose i am at this cell 3 so before like before the cell like suppose i am currently at this cell 3 so i should uh, my dfs should tell me not only this my dfs should tell me that what was the previous value what was the previous value right if the previous value is 2 then i will say that okay the path increases by 1 because because what is happening the previous value is 2 and the next value is nothing but 3 so in that case the path is increasing but suppose if the previous value was 5 and then i'm moving to 4 so in that case i'll not consider this path right i'll not consider this part and i should return a 0 so these are the cases that i need to consider here okay so that is why i'll take a previous value that is that is nothing but the uh, value of the previous cell that i that i was at and then I can say that I need to store the result result is equal to nothing but maximum of result comma the path sum that I've calculated for this particular cell. Okay. After this, I need to implement the DFS function here. So what I will say is that I'll have int DFS and in, in this DFS call, first of all, I'll be passing what? I'll be passing the matrix here. Uh, I'll first of all pass the matrix. Then I'll pass the int i comma j, the ith and the gth, ith column and the gth row that I am at. Okay. After this part, I'll pass int n comma int m. That is the number of rows and the number of columns. And I also need to pass the previous. So I'll say that int previous. That is nothing but the previous value. After this part is done. So what are the base conditions that, that I can return? So suppose that I fall out of the grid. Okay. 
suppose that i was here suppose i were at this cell and i move out of the grid okay or i was at this cell and i move out of the grid by moving up or i was at this cell and i move up and i move uh, move out of the cell or i moved right and i move out of the cell so in those cases i should return a zero and another case when i should return a zero is when my previous value right suppose that uh, suppose what happens is suppose i was here suppose my previous value is uh, previous value is 5 and then i am moving towards the downside so the current value is 4 so if my previous value is greater equal to the current value in that case also i should return 0 because that path uh, will no longer be increasing so i can say that if it is invalid so if i is 0 or uh, it happens that i is greater equal to n or it happens that uh, j is lesser than 0 or it happens uh, that j is greater equal to m uh, that these means these conditions mean that if i am going outside the grid so in that case i will return 0 or it happens that the current matrix of ij that is the current value of the matrix if it is lesser than equal to the previous value in that case the path will no longer be increasing and in this case i should simply return a 0 otherwise what are the things that i should do otherwise i should say that i'll have a int result otherwise i should mark my result as 0 okay and i should uh, i should mark this result as 0 and what are the four choices that i have so i have four choices to go right so let us suppose that uh, like, let us suppose that i was at this cell let us suppose that i was at, at this cell 1 so in that case i have a option to go down towards uh, go towards the right side go towards the upside and left side so i will say that from this the path length will be 0 from this the path length will be 0 because i'm going outside the grid and from this from this from this to Uh, like if i move towards the right side then what will be the maximum path so you will see you will be able to observe that the maximum path will be nothing but 7 because uh, because if i move from 2 to from 2 move, i move to 3 then 6 then 7 then 8 and then 9 so you can see that the overall path length will be uh, like overall path length will be nothing but 6 so if i if i am moving towards my right side if i am moving if from 1 if i am moving towards the right side so the path uh, the path length uh, the increasing path length is coming out to be 6 and is it actually 6 no it is actually 7 because in the result uh, like i have stored that if i move towards the right side then the path will be uh, or the increasing path will be of length 6 you can see 2 then 3 then 6 then 7 then 8 and then 9 so the path will be of length 6 but i have to include the my value as well okay because uh, because the previous value that that is 1 is uh, lesser than 2 so that means this path will also be included okay uh, then then only this will be called so i can say that if i am also including this then in the end uh, whatever result i have calculated out of the four choices four directions i am moving uh, whatever i have calculated uh, plus 1 i have to return okay because if if let's say if i move towards the downward direction right suppose uh, suppose that instead of moving here if i move towards the down direction if i am moving towards the down direction then you can observe that i will just be able to get this this one length right Uh, just one path uh, like uh, the total length will be like if this gives me one then uh, in the result one will be stored but i will say that since i have to include this as well so the result plus one i have to return ultimately but this this is not something that i'll do because uh, this part uh, this uh, going towards the right is giving me a path of 6 and uh, including me the path length will be 7 right so that's why i'll include it so basically what i will do is i'll i'll write all the choices here so what are the uh, what are the choices that i have so i have the choice one that uh, the choice one suppose is that i go down right so the choice one let's say is down. if i let, let's say i write uh, let's say i write it as choices only so choice one is that maybe i go downwards so if i'm going downward so what i will do is i'll pass the matrix and then i'll go if i'm going downward so i increases by 1 so i plus 1 comma j remains the same and then i'll pass what i'll pass n and i'll pass m and i'll pass the current value that will now now become the previous value for the next gfs call so i'll pass the matrix of ij that is the current value in the matrix or otherwise what i can do do is i'll have the choice to so this is when uh, this is the recursive call when uh, this is the dfs call when i am trying to move towards the downside if suppose that instead of moving down if i am moving uh, if i want to move up so if i move, want to move up so i will say i minus 1 and then j will remain the same then n comma m and then the previous value will be what the current uh, matrix value will become the previous value so i want to pass it okay so i'll say that if this is when i am moving towards the upside other choice that i can have is uh, in choice number 3 that i can have is let's suppose i want to move towards the right side so i will say that maybe i can move towards the right side as well maybe i can get a maximum path from there so what i'll say is that if i'm moving towards the right side so i will remain the same j will increase by 1 and then what will happen i'll pass n and i'll pass m and i'll pass the matrix of uh, ij that is the current cell value okay this is what i will pass and this is when i am moving towards the right side similarly there could be a uh, fourth choice for me the fourth choice could be that i move towards the uh, towards the left side okay so i call this dfs towards the left side so what i'll say is that uh, i'll first of all pass the uh, matrix then i comma j minus 1 because uh, if i'm moving towards the left side then i remains the same uh, the row remains the same the, the column uh, decreases by 1 okay after this i'll pass n i'll pass m and i'll say that i'll say matrix of uh, ij is what i will be uh, passing as the previous value okay so this is when i am moving towards the 
left side so these are the four choices that i can have and which choice will i choose so i'll say that result is equal to nothing but maximum of the four choices so i'll say that i'll choose the maximum of the choice one the maximum of the choice two and the maximum of the, of the all the four choices i'll choose right i'll choose the maximum of out of all so i'll say that maximum of choice three comma maximum of the choice four is what i will choose now once i have done this so i as i said that if i'm including so i should return result plus one along with me why i should return result plus one because as i mentioned that if if going towards my right side if suppose that i i was at this value suppose i would i was at this value suppose i was at one and from one if i if i see towards my right side from one if i see towards my right side so i can see that two is giving me the path with the length six two is giving me the path with the length six and uh, if i include one as well so the overall path will be nothing but seven because if i move towards the right side the length of the path is six and I, if i include myself as well so uh, if the result is storing six so i should include myself as well so the result plus one is what i should return okay so this is how we will implement it and in the end i think that in the end i can directly return the uh, result that i've stored so let us try and compile this to see if it works on the samples so you can see uh, i think it is not working here okay so it is saying that uh matrix of i and j previous okay instead of previous yes uh this is one mistake that i've done instead of previous i should uh, uh, i should initially pass minus one why because uh, it is saying that the matrix must be having positive values right matrix will be having positive values so suppose i'm starting from a particular cell suppose i like whichever cell from whichever cell i will be starting at least the the maximum length from each cell will at least be one right if if you say this this is nine if you consider this uh, this node uh, this grid as nine uh, this cell as nine so even for this cell the maximum length will be one okay why because the, although this is a maximum but you will consider this cell at least right so that's why you will say that if you are starting from this cell if you are starting from this cell nine so first of all you should have the previous value right so you should mark the previous value as minus one so that when you compare nine uh, when you compare any value when you compare any value of the grid with the previous value initially so uh, it will be minus one so it will always work for for this right so uh, for every cell initially one length will be added okay so that's why you need to pass this uh, now let us try and compile this to see if it works on the samples okay so it seems to work on the samples we are getting the sample output as 7 but as i said it is a brute force approach so i think it will give us a time limit exceeded let us try and see so you can see that we will get a time limit exceeded yes you can see that we are getting on the test case 230 we are getting a time limit exceeded now why are we getting that because what is happening if for one time if like the grid size is overall the overall grid size is n cross m so if for one if for one particular cell if you are calling the dfs call so it is taking n cross m time but there are n cross m cells so for every cell if you will call the dfs so in the worst case it will take n square into m square time that is a lot and we can do it in much better optimal way so what we can say is that if we have already calculated the path for a particular cell right if we have already calculated uh, the optimal path for a particular cell let us say that we have uh, considered it like this so let us say what is happening is let us say that uh, if the path is something like this suppose that uh, we consider the sample case only that was given to us so if the sample case is one two nine okay and let's say it is after that it is what let's say it is uh, nothing but uh, here uh, let's say we write here five okay if we write here five and then uh, we write here three eight then four six and seven so what will happen is suppose uh, like uh, let's not take the numbers let's try and understand it in much better manner so let us say that what what is happening is let us say that currently i'm standing at this uh, blue cell right suppose that uh, suppose that currently i'm standing at this blue cell so you will say that i should call towards my left side i should call towards my left side and see that what is the maximum path there but i can say that suppose i've already calculated suppose this is the yellow cell uh, to which i'm moving leftwards so if this if towards my left if towards my like if currently current if currently i'm at this cell right and i i want to see that whether what is the maximum path for my left cell or uh, what is the maximum towards my left so if it is already calculated then i'll not calculate it again and again so that is where the concept of dp or you can say memoization comes into play that what i can do is if a particular path if a per, if from a particular cell i comma j if the path optimal path if the in, increasing path is already calculated then i will not want to calculate it again and that is how i can optimize this solution because in that case what will happen in that case if i'm if i'm saying that if a particular cell uh, for a particular cell if the longest path is already calculated then i'll not update it then i'll not go to calculate it again so in that case i'll be traversing each of the cells exactly once so that means uh, n m cross a, m cross n cells n cross m cells so that that is why the time complexity will now become order of n cross m okay so let us try and see what will happen 
so for this we will need a dp array and since the number of vertices here are 100 and 100 so i will take a 2d dp of 101 and 101 here and then what i will do is i'll mark initially all the values as zero indicating that uh, from every cell currently i'm considering that they have not been visit uh, like they have not been uh, visited up till now and uh, for uh, from them the longest increasing path is, is still zero and i will say here what i will say that if it happens that uh, the dp of ij if the current uh, cell if for the current cell uh, the value is not calculated if the shortest uh, if the longest path uh, for the current cell is not calculated then i will run the dfs call for them okay and here here what i will do is i will say that if it happens that the dp of ij is not equal to zero so if if the longest uh, increasing path for the current cell is already calculated then i should return it without calculating it further right if it is already calculated then why to calculate it again and why do increase the time complexity okay that is what i'll do and here also before returning what i'll say is that dp of ij i will i'll uh, i'll have the result uh, i'll calculate the result and then store it and then ultimately i'll return it okay there so you can see that every in this way every cell i'll be visiting exactly once so this is what I'm trying to do. Let us try and compile this code to see if it works on the samples. So I think it works on the samples. Let us try and submit this code as well. So you can see that our solution was able to pass all the test cases. And if you will consider the time complexity, right? So the time complexity will be nothing but order of n cross m because we are visiting every cell, right? Every cell we are visiting exactly once, exactly once, right? Exactly once. So that's why it will be order of n cross m. And the space complexity will also be order of n cross m because we are using extra uh, extra 2d array for memoization purpose using dp thank you for watching this video in case if you understood this hard problem make sure to comment down understood in the chat and also like the video thank you